In this video, I'll be showing you how to run and test your Omniverse microservice in headless mode by creating a custom kit application that runs headless. Uh, the basic idea is that if you configure a kit application that does not require any UI extensions, then it should run in headless mode. And here I have a basic microservice extension set up. And if you haven't seen my previous video, uh, which covers how to build this and also uh, how to set up a Visual Studio code project to build a microservice extension, I highly recommend checking that out. The link is in, this, in the description for this video. And this is based off of tutorial one of the microservices. And in that tutorial, there is actually a configuration for a kit app that will run in headless mode as well. So we're actually going to be using that for this video. Uh, so I have my project here and I have the symbolic link to the code application. And I've been developing this uh, interactively with the code app running uh, to execute this, this extension, but now I'm going to set up that headless application. And if I open up omnicode.batch, it has, uh, all it's doing is it's calling kit.exe and passing it omnicode.kit from the apps directory. So in that apps directory, here's omnicode.kit. And this is a configuration file for extensions that need to be loaded, how it should be laid out, uh, and any additional settings that it needs. So we're going to be setting up one of these and also the batch file to go with it. So first thing that I will do is copy the omnicode.batch and I will paste it into the same location. And I'm going to rename that Omni Micro for microservice. Uh, and then I'm going to call, I'm going to pass it an Omni Micro.kit in this case. So I don't need that anymore. That's all set up. And then I'm going to create a new file in the apps folder Omni Micro dot kit and go back to that tutorial one and take the configuration from there. And so it has some metadata here about the title, the version description. It has some settings for setting up folders, uh, search paths for where to look for extensions. In this case, it's, it's appending to this variable, uh, these additional paths, and it's referring to this app variable, which is just the location of this kit file, so the apps folder. It's going up a directory and adding this EXTS folder. And then it's also including the apps folder itself, which um, kit files can include other kit files so you can modul modularize your uh, application building um, so that's why that's there. Uh, but we're also going to add one more because uh, this is a microservice and in the code app, uh, the microservices, the, the extensions that we're using are located in the extensions cache folder. So we're going to add that one too. So I'll copy this and instead of EXTS, it's going to be EXTS cache. And lastly, I can remove the tutorials extension because we're not using that. I could add my extension here to as a dependency for this app, but in this case, I'm just going to set it up as a uh, just a vanilla application that then I can uh, test various microservices uh, individually again with it. So now that that's all set up, I can run a terminal. And I'm going to execute that batch file. So that's going to be in that app folder, Omni micro.batch. If I run that, you can see here it's starting up a bunch of extensions. That's more than what I specified. Uh, and it's saying that the app is ready. Why is it more than what I specified? That's because if I go to the code app 
and I look for that HTTP transport server transport extension. I can see here that under dependencies, if I look at the dependency graph, it's got the transport server HTTP, server base, services core, facilities, async engine, these pip modules, and those are the ones that are being lo uh, loaded. Those are all dependencies of my um, of the one extension that I've that I've uh, declared here. So we're done with the code app now. So I'm just going to extend this here. And now uh, I'm going to stop this application because it doesn't include currently my extension that I'm working on. So for that, I'm going to add an extension folder and that's going to be um, .exts, which would be this one here, right? The one that I'm working on. And I'm going to enable the extension that I'm working on. Medicodes, services, dot symbol. So now that's going to run, uh, load. Um, it, load, it loaded up the, the services simple. Here's the printout that I have for that, and it's running. So now if I come over here and I can just go ahead and go to this URL, which is the, uh, in this case, it's the 8011 port number forward slash doc, docs. Um, here's my simple service, the ping endpoint. I try it out, and there's the response body. So that's working great. Um, again, uh, this is all hot reloading. So I can go back here, re-execute, and there's the updated response. So that is, is all working. Uh, now, this is a bare bones application. Uh, if I, so when I'm working and I start to add more dependencies, so for example, omni.usd, if I save this now, I'm going to get an error. There's no module named omni.usd. It doesn't know anything about that uh, Python package or, or that extension. So I need to add that to, to my runtime. And, and um, I could add that to my application. I could add that here. Um, but if this is an ex uh, a dependency for my extension, I should add it into my extension.toml. Right under the config folder, there's that extension toml. And I'm going to add omni.usd. So if you've been developing some extensions, uh, maybe you haven't been doing uh, this adding of dependencies because maybe you're developing the code app and there's lots of extensions already loaded. But in this case, um, this is a bare bones uh, kit application. And so we need to be more diligent about the adding the dependencies when, when they're needed. So when I saved that extension toml, it all reran. Here's the Omni USD extension loaded and everything's working again. So this was a video about running and testing your microservices in headless mode. And I hope this helps.